Good morning, everyone. It is January 19, 2022. I'm delighted to welcome everyone to Art at Home. My name is Liz. As always, I want to start out by thanking the Hoboken Public Library for being so fantastic in supporting us during this time of COVID-19 and um, forcing us to having to work at home and allowing us to continue our creative process from the confines of our home. Uh, I want to also thank Heidi Schwab, Programming Director of the Hoboken Public Library, for also being instrumental, hugely instrumental in making Art at Home happen for us. In January, we are beginning a new year filled with hope uh, and hopefully joy for the months ahead. We're hoping to turn a corner in this pandemic and are looking towards a brighter future. And because of that, I made hope our theme and we are looking at artists who have kind of a hopeful bent to their work, a hopeful um, outward approach, an opening up approach to their work. This week, our main artist is a man named Robert Indiana. I'm going to talk briefly about his life we're going to look at some images of his work and then you folks are gonna get an assignment from me and you're going to get a chance to look, uh, to create and make your own Indiana inspired work. And at the end, we're gonna take a few minutes to share if you are willing what you've created. But before we look and talk about Indiana's work, look at it and talk about his work, I want to share a piece of art by our own artist, Lorraine. Now, I don't usually do this, but Lorraine does not have access to a camera and she has been unable to share her work with us because of that. So if you remember last week, Gustav Klimt was one of our artists for inspiration. And I want to take a second for all of us to get to see her work, inspired by Clint. Everyone able to see this? Wow. 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 My reaction too. Lorraine, I hope you can hear everyone's positive comments. Wow. Lorraine, do you want to unmute and talk very briefly, if you would, about this image? Mm. Are you in the house, Lorraine? No, Are you with us? I don't know. Oh, yeah, Lorraine, you're here. Not able to speak? Maybe during sharing time. Oh, wait, we have something in the chat. No, we can't hear you, Lorraine. Not sure why. So you know what, Lorraine, we're gonna come back during sharing time. And if we have time, we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about your very Klimt-like, beautiful piece of art. But we need to move on to Robert Indiana. So thank you for allowing me to, to share it, Lorraine, because it was quite wonderful. Um, Robert Indiana was born Robert Clark, interestingly enough. He was born September 13th, 1928 in Newcastle, Indiana. He was adopted by Earl Clark and Carmen Waters. Um, and after his parents divorced, he relocated to Indianapolis where he chose to live with his father, 
so that he could attend the Arsenal Technical High School from 1942 to 1946. He actually graduated as the valedictorian of his class. He served three years in the United States Army Air Force. He studied art at the Art Institute of Chicago from 1949 to 1953. He also went to the Skohegan School of Painting and Sculpture in Maine and the Edinburgh University and Edinburgh College of Art. He returned to the United States in 1954 and settled in New York City. In New York, he met Ellsworth Kelly. Uh, they became lovers. Uh, they met in 1956 and Kelly helped him find an artist's loft in Coenty Slip. And here he met neighboring artists like Jack Youngerman, Agnes Martin, and Cy Twombly. He shared a studio with Tw uh, Twombly for a while. Indiana's career uh, began to take off in the early 1960s when Alfred H. Barr Jr. bought the American Dream, one painting for the Museum of Modern Art. I searched for that exact image on the internet and could only find a painting called the American Dream, but so I'm not sure if that's the one that MoMA owns. Maybe one of you uh, knows when I show the image if I found the exact one, but we will be taking a look um, at his piece. Oh, and I see Lorraine that you put something in the chat uh, talking about your piece. So as soon as I stop talking about Indiana's life, I'll check that out and share it with everyone. So we will look at a piece called The American Dream. Um, and when we start talking about Indiana's work and you'll see, I hope, why he started to gain in fame and notoriety at that point. Uh, in 1964, he moved from Coenta Slip to a five-story building at Spring Street and the Bowery. In 1969, he began renting the upstairs of the mansarded uh, house, Oddfellows Hall, named the Star of Hope, in the island town of Vinyl Haven, Maine. And he rented that as a seasonal studio. Um, and Marston Hartley uh, had used that same island as a place of retreat uh, where he created his paintings. Uh, Indiana bought this building in 1973, and then he moved in full time when he lost his lease in the Bowery in 1978. As he aged, Indiana grew to become a recluse and he lived full time in Vinyl Haven, Maine. He died on May 19th, 2018 at his home there. He died of respiratory failure at the age of 89. One day before his death, a lawsuit was filed over claims that his caretaker had isolated him from family and friends. Um, so that his estate was, underwent an, a very extensive contentious battle after his death. So his work is very simple and bold. Uh, he used bright primary colors primarily in his work and he used words, short, simple words, as well as numbers in his imagery. There's a very kind of graphic commercial design feel to his work, which you're about to see momentarily. Uh, he became quite famous and well known for his series called Eat. One of the paintings uh, from the Eat series ended up in the Philip Johnson Pavilion, the New York State Pavilion at the 1964 New York World's Fair. Unfortunately, the image got taken down because people thought it was the entryway to a restaurant and it caused a lot of confusion. What else? After 9-11, he was already quite old and he created a series of paintings in 2004 
called the peace paintings that brought him back uh, into the, the larger fold of the art scene late in life. He was also a theatrical set and costume designer. Uh, he worked for the Santa Fe Opera for most of his life. And he was also in a film by Andy Warhol called Eat. It's a 45 minute film in which Indiana sits eating a mushroom. <laughs> He became most famous for his series of paintings called Love, in which he put the word love with the letter O tilted at a diagonal. And there's a famous story about how this image came about. He um, was having a bit of a, a tiff with Ellsworth Kelly and what they did at that time in their lives was Kelly would paint color fields and he would send them to Indiana and Indiana would overlay words on top of it. And apparently Indiana was doing the word that starts with F and ends in K and <laughs> because they were fighting with each other, but apparently they made up and he switched to the word love. And the rest is history. The image of the painting Love became the best-selling Christmas card of the Museum of Modern Art. Indiana made it into a series. Uh, there were several printings of the image. Uh, the museum sold untold numbers of posters of it and prints. He proceeded to make sculptures of the word love. Um, one of which is in a permanent location in Manhattan, but unfortunately I forget where. He even did it in Hebrew and it, it's quite famous. All right, let's see what Lorraine has written in the chat box and then we're gonna look at images. Oh, apparently Lorraine cannot communicate by voice because she doesn't have a camera. So she can't communicate by voice either. That's so frustrating, Lorraine. Sorry about that. So she says, thank you for your comments, everyone. We love your painting, Lorraine. And we're delighted you're a member of the class, even with your, what do we call them, disabilities. Limitations. Yes, even with your frustrations. All right, so now we're gonna look at Indiana's work. You're welcome, Lorraine. And keep doing art. Right on. <laughs> so here we go with Mr. Indiana. This is American Dream. Everyone able to see this? Yep. Yes. Is it big enough? Yes. So you can see the, the very graphic quality of his work, the design elements. Um, I have no information that he trained as a graphic illustrator, but certainly the feeling of illustration is very strong in his work. Notice the use of numbers and words. So his words carry meaning in his paintings, but they also read as shape. Very geometric, although how much do we love the non-geometric form of these black shapes that he's put all the way horizontally, one, two, three, top, middle, and bottom of this piece that give it a really nice rhythmic flow. Any comments? <laughs> 
I think the composition is so very interesting. You can read it a multiple of ways, although for me, I first look at this red star and I read it left, right, up, over. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but that's the way my eye goes when I look at this painting. <clears throat> It feels very much like an exercise. It 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 doesn't um, it doesn't do anything for me. There's not a lot of emotional content to his work, so it's it's completely visual. If you are a person who needs warmth and depth and feeling to your imagery. I mean, and this is what pop art is. Pop yeah. art comes from graphic illustration. It comes from packaging. It comes from um, advertising. That is the in inspiration for these artists. And of course, Warhol being the greatest proponent of all that. The idea was to force people look at everyday objects and things like labels, product labels and posters and advertising as things of beauty. Learn to appreciate what's in, in front of you on an everyday basis. Again, very simple primary and secondary colors. I like the repetition of the star shape and certainly the circle as defining elements of the composition of this piece. All right, enough said about this. This could be the painting that the Museum of Modern Art owns. I'm not positive. Um, not gonna enlarge all of these. I think we're gonna go quickly now through. This is one of his earlier works, I believe. Again, you can see how he's inspired by advertising and illustration. I can't see anything. You can't see anything at all? No. The image hasn't come up, Liz. It, it just says um, uh, you started screen sharing and it's just um, buffering. Okay, let's stop the share and try again. Let's try this one. No, yes, maybe. No. No. What about that? No. <clears throat> And we may be having technical difficulties. <laughs> um, oh, you know what? I might have to reopen the folder every time. Mm. That stinks. Okay, let's try now. That may be what the problem is. Okay, what about now? No. You it says Elizabeth has started screen sharing. It's black and has that written on it. Hmm. I know what I'm gonna try. Let's jump right to the love image, shall we? I'm going to try dragging some of these onto my desktop and then sharing. Okay, bear with me. Sorry, everyone. Um. Up there. 
share screen. This is very interesting. Okay, what about now? Yes. Okay. So this is one of the famous love pictures. He did it in many different colors. Uh, this is, I believe, the most famous of the series. He said that he made the, the most of the image red and green because his father worked at a Phillips gas station when he was growing up and red and green are the Phillips colors. And the blue stands for the blue Hoosier sky of Indiana. Indiana is the Hoosier state. So he would look at the red and green of the Phillips gas station sign against the blue of the Indiana sky. The letters are monumental. They become shapes as opposed to letters, but the largeness of the letters certainly give the meaning of the word a power, I think. I love the negative shapes that he emphasizes by using this block style font the way he chooses to fill in the central portion of the letter as part of the composition is pretty inspired. All right, let's look at a couple of others. Um, this is one of his sculptures. I actually feel as if his sculptures are much more powerful. What do you think? Any comments? I, I like his paintings. I love his colors and, and the quality of the paint on the surface. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're very smooth, his paintings, almost as if he was using rollers as opposed to brushes but I do believe he used brushes. Okay, thank you, Robin. And thank you, Suzanne, for your comments. Love all your comments. I like the sculpture so much because you can see through them. Liz, would you say the background is, is intentional there? Well, this is a, an exhibit at MoMA. I believe it's his solo show and that's, a mural that he probably painted. I think that's one of his pieces on the wall behind. I just like the whole placement of the sculpture yeah. Yeah. against the backdrop. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I agree. Yeah, Jane, I agree. Okay, let's look at a few more. So he did do other words. He got into this ombre thing too, which I think is kind of interesting. He loved tilting that letter O. Again, I love how he uses the negative shape, the way the negative shapes become something completely different. And this is a piece from his earlier, <clears throat> of his career. I think 
This might be part of the American Dream series. You can see, I think, the influence of Ellsworth Kelly in this. If you don't know Kelly's work, I recommend that you look him up. Kelly was um, influenced by uh, the Bauhaus and industrial architecture. This one to me feels very militaristic, mm -hmm. almost decal. Still with the basic primary and secondary flat colors. I like that it's positioned in a diamond. Oh, this is something when we do our assignment today that I want you to pay particular attention to. The way he likes to take a shape in which he creates the overall composition. So in this one, it's the diamond in which he's put a circle in which he's put other geometric shapes. So this is a helpful way to format a composition. Start with one geometric shape in which you do your smaller shapes. And using a diamond like this is, is very unusual. It's kind of unique. Okay, here's the last one we're gonna look at and then I'm gonna give us our assignments for today. He also was fascinated by numbers. He also liked playing around with colors on different backgrounds, seeing what colors do to each other. He probably was looking at a lot of Joseph Albers color field work. Again, very, very, very pop art, very commercial in style. So this is a series of paintings. This is not one painting, but this is an installation of 10 paintings on one wall, side by side. Again, the circle is his defining shape for his composition, and he works within the circle. I love how the shape of the numbers in some instances just about touches the inner edge of the circle. That creates for a really exciting compositional dynamic, something to think about in your own work today. I wanna talk about that just briefly some more. So I wanna go back to the love image one last time. Oops, sorry, did that wrong. So I really want you to focus on this in your own work today. Here he started obviously with the square of the canvas, but notice the way the letters not only touch each other, but touch the outer edge of the square of the frame. <clears throat> I want you to really think hard about that in your work today, because that really, really helps you to create an amazing composition. It doesn't have to be symmetrical but it helps you to create these extraordinary negative shapes that you can play around with. You can play with color, or if you do, you could do this just in black and white today. You can play with dark and light. All right.
Not a lot of talk today about Indiana's work. Are there any comments that people want to make before we move on to what we're going to make today? No further thoughts? Something in the chat box, let's see. <coughs> Sculpture is downtown in Manhattan, down in the Wall Street area. Yes, I knew it was in the Wall Street area. Did, you didn't find an exact location? No, I didn't find an exact address. Thanks for looking, Margo. I think it's pretty close to the Trade Center for some reason, but I could be wrong. I feel like it's near a subway stop somewhere. Exactly. Which piece are we? Which piece is this? The love sculpture. It's an outdoor piece now. Somewhere in the Wall Street area, but we can't remember exactly where. We're trying to figure it out. We need Lauren. How is she doing, by the way? Uh, she's good. They're re uh, releasing her from rehab today. So why Dean and Lauren aren't here today. Okay. Oh, that's great news. Thank you. So she'll go to, to their house for the next part of her recovery. Awesome. Bravo. Oh, Lorraine said there's a love sculpture. Where in Philadelphia? Let me look in the chat. In a Philadelphia park. Yeah, I think... Um, there are many probably throughout the United States, probably throughout the world at this point. Robert Indiana I did just, very well in his life. I just found a reference to 55th and, sec and 6th Uptown. Oh, there's one Uptown. Okay. That's if it's a yes, current it's reference. The one. This is the one, I think. Okay. It was near the Museum of Modern Art, you know, within that vicinity. Okay. Maybe that this was, was uh, dated 2019. I'll put it in the chat. It's near a subway. Okay. Thank you so much. That's great. All right. So here's your assignment today. And I gave you, those of you who are in last week's class, those of you who are on my email list, um, I gave you advance warning on this. Think of a word that has meaning for you. We are going to put it in a composition. I want you to do it in large size. I want you to think of the letters as monumental block shape forms. And then if you have paints, I want you to paint this composition. I want you to think of the word as an image, a visual image. Think less about its meaning when you are actually drawing and painting it and more as something visual. But I think, I predict as you are creating, it's going to come out as something quite emotionally powerful. And the reason I'm making this prediction is because this is going to sound very sexist. I might get thrown off this job even for saying this. I might get fired. But I think because we're female, I think that we're going to have a totally different approach to this concept than Robert Indiana had. But I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. Um, so let's see. That's my hypothesis. If you do not have paint, you could work this project in many different ways. You could create a collage. You could do it in fabric. You could do it in paper. Um, you could do it in marker. You could do it in oil pastel. You could try using crayon resist technique if you've done that with me before. So there are many options for you. But I, I would try using the letters in block form Draw first in pencil, think of 
a geometric shape in which you are going to situate the letters, have the letters touch the edges of the shape, the first shape, the basic shape that you start out with as your frame and have them touch each other. Draw first in pencil and then do your colors. Use basic primary and secondary colors. I would avoid mixing for this um, particular piece, unless of course you don't have secondary colors and then you will have to mix. All right, questions? All right, let's go to work, have fun. Feel free to ask if you have any questions or you run into problems along the way. I will be here. I do ask that you stay muted while you're working because many of us like to have quiet while we work. I have muted my phone, it's on do not disturb. I have to turn the volume off now. It's not indicating. The name is It is what? Have fun, everyone. I just don't know how to. So I am going to work in pencil first, and I'm going to use acrylic paint. Someone is not muted, so please remember to mute. And just a reminder today, I, I do have to get off exactly at 12 noon. I hope you all understand. I'll be working on my own piece, but as always, I prefer that you not watch me. that that can be inhibiting. There's a lot of glare in here today. I don't know what to do about that. It's supposed to be sunny today. Not happening. My word for today, I thought it was going to be doll, but nope. I am going to do the word earth. That's the word that's calling to me today. I'm going to turn my paper horizontally. And my Framing shape is going to be a triangle. Starting out with a giant triangle. I'm not using a ruler, but if you are truly into the pop art genre, you probably do want to have a straight edge of some kind to stay 
within that very strict geomet geometric format. And I think within my triangle, I'm going to go even further with my basic shape framing. I'm going to put a circle within the triangle. Remember how Indiana liked putting shapes inside of shapes. And I'm going to make my shirt circle fit within the triangle if possible. And the circle stands for our globe, Earth. And I don't know why, but I'm I'm gonna vary lower and upper clip case letters. My letters, I'm going to try and make them fill the circle now. There's my E. So again, I, I'm drawing freehand, but if you have a straight edge or ruler, you probably want to use it for this piece to stay in that pop art style. And I am not putting my letters in order. I'm going to put the R up here. H. All right, I'm already ready to paint. So that is one nice thing about this kind of work. The composition can come very quickly. I think I might work one color at a time too, rather than laying out a whole palette. And with this, I think I'm going to start with the smaller shapes first.
and I am going to run off camera just for a second because the other artist in the house has taken some of my colors. I just realized, so forgive me. I shall be right back. I'm painting my letters first. And I am using acrylic.
Now, if you're concerned about having exact edges, I don't have any blue painter's tape available at the moment, but it is the perfect thing. You can lay blue painter's tape right up next to the edge of your shape and you can paint right over the edge of the tape. And then when the paint is dry, you can peel away that blue tape and you'll have a very clean, perfect edge. Unfortunately, I, I don't have any in my studio at the moment. But if you want that hard edge quality and um, Robert Indiana definitely wanted that. He said that Ellsworth Kelly uh, was the person who turned him on to hard edges. And it was something he strove for in his work. I'm trying to remember back to the 1960s, I don't think blue painter's tape was even invented yet. So he had to acquire a very steady hand. Another trick is to hold your wrist to keep it steady. You can also hold the brush in the metal area by the tip of the brush. If you want a hard edge, don't try and control it and hold it way back in the wooden handle part. But if you hold it closer to the hair part of the brush in the metal connecting area, you have way more control. I'm not gonna stress too much about that. Sometimes with acrylic paint too, you get a, a very streaky surface. And if you don't like that, particularly with this kind of work, just let your first coat dry and then you can paint over it and get a much smoother quality to the surface of your work. You can eliminate the brush strokes and get a smoother surface to your work. And if you want that perfect edge, you can always switch to a finer point brush. Don't paint right up to the edge with the larger brush, switch to a smaller one with a finer tip.
And I think my letter H, I'm going to make an entirely different color. Use my favorite color on earth. Uh huh, that's kind of funny. I'm going to use my favorite color on earth for the letter H in earth. And that is burnt sienna. So there's my word. How's everyone doing? No problems? Thanks. 
this went. Again, if you have something you want to say, feel free. Good, we have plenty of time left. Yes. It occurred to me too, if you don't care for Indiana's work, you can always do an anti-Indiana piece, something completely different. thought of that before. That would be interesting to see, an anti-piece. What would that look like? So I am doing a bit of mixing here. I'm mixing white with my cobalt blue. The cobalt just seemed a little bit too dark for the tone of the letters that I've made. Not going quite up to the edges of my letters just yet because I know they're still wet.
and a note about color. You can really make your colors pop by thinking about the color wheel. If you use the primary colors with their complementary opposites, so that would be red with green, yellow with violet, blue with orange, particularly when you're working with your lettering, that can create an exciting composition. Or you can work with dark tone and lighter hue and create exciting things with value. can experiment with either or things. Or you can think about the meaning of the word, which I think is what I have done, and choose colors that emphasize the meaning of the word that you're working on.
Now, the great thing about painting your smaller shapes or your letters first is that when you fill in the negative shapes afterwards, you can really tidy up any rough edges that you have by just painting over them. I always find that such a satisfying thing. I'm not sure why. One, the rough edges are gone. Oops, that was still wet.
right. So now I have to decide what color to make the triangle. I'm leaning towards red. And I'm looking at some of my letters. They look a little bit dull. So I am tempted when this is dry to perhaps do some outlining, which Indiana would have done as well. Outline perhaps in a brighter color. brighter or darker, I'm not sure which. Let's try red for my triangle. It should brighten up this whole picture.
All right. So there is my earth. More will be done once it's dry. Definitely need to outline the letters. And we have about seven more minutes till sharing time. Difficult to see because of the glare. But I think you get the idea of what you can accomplish with an Indiana style painting. Robert Indiana, our artist for today. While you're finishing up, I'm going to look up our artist for next week. And we'll talk briefly about that person and then we will share. Hope you're all having fun. next week our last January class. Can that be possible? Oh, take care, Stephanie. See you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. It is next week is our final January class. And I'm going to put the artist in our chat box. Okay, a few more minutes. Hi, Vanessa. Thanks a lot. Take care. You're welcome. Hope you enjoyed. Very much so. <laughs> I know, I know sometimes folks have to leave early. That's fine. 
Uh, frequently, you leave me messages in the chat box, and I don't always catch them if I'm busy teaching. So do know that I completely understand life is busy. I'm also going to put in the chat box before we begin sharing the information about my solo show, which I'm going to be hanging next, not this weekend, but next weekend. All right, sorry to stop your creative flow, but it is time for sharing. Uh, first, I wanna just talk briefly about our artist for next week. We are gonna be looking at the work of Shepard Fairey. Uh, Shepard Fairey is probably most famous for his portrait of President Barack Obama. Uh, but he's done a variety of other work. You can actually see his work right here in Jersey City. He's painted a, a stunning, very large mural uh, on an industrial building on, I believe it's Center Street, very close to the Erie Lackawanna train tracks. It's unfortunately in a very off the beaten track uh, building near where the giant David Bowie mural is. Um, I personally think the Shepherd Fairy mural is much better. But he is our artist for next week. Uh, I will be sending more information about him in our weekly email newsletter. All right. And he will be our final artist for January. Our hope and change artist. Very appropriate for this month. Suzanne, you are first in my queue. Would you like to share? Can I share what I did last week? Sure. Because I, I, I'm still working on a different version. Anytime. Here you go. Oh, you've changed it considerably. No, actually, this is this is what I sent you, and I'm doing another one 
in acrylic um, that I've been drawing now that I'm gonna paint darker and get the gold in the figure, which, you know, when I did this one, I did it more as a... Oh, see, it looks so much different in person. It does, I know. What do you think if I, if I'm doing, I'm doing, I've redone the drawing already. Uh -huh. and then if I get, you know, like, you know, Clint does get some of the gold, not too much, but involved in it. Try it. Any suggestions or? Is this the second one or the first one now? The first one that I sent you. This is, I haven't done the. I, see, I love this piece the way it is. I would leave it and I would start a second one and, and use the gold okay. in the second one. Okay, so then you would do this one. You don't like the gold with this one. You would just leave it as this. Well, I mean, if you want to try it in this one, you could, but I like this one as is. Okay. And I think it looks good with the golden frame. Oh, so okay. you might want to do a whole new one with the gold and then compare what you like better. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I love the rendering of the doors in that image. In this one? Yeah. And you don't really get that in the JPEG. I, I didn't get that they were doors at all, quite frankly. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, it was like, because I was playing with the space. I mean, it's from a photograph, but, you know, it's between doors, you know, to give a different impression of the figure and also give us different perspective. Awesome. All right. Can't wait to see it progress. Thank you. Uh, Margo, you're next. Okay, hold on. <laughs> it's all right. I can't suddenly find the replace spotlight button. Hold on. Okay. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Heel. Yeah. Looks like uh, I good. like the brightness of it. Really nice. Are you using watercolors or acrylic? The gold star is acrylic. The rest are watercolors. Yeah, I love it. Okay. I, and the page isn't as red as I meant it to be. <laughs> No, but this is watercolor paint, so you're probably never going to achieve that vibrancy. The red, you mean? Yeah. Do you know what color you're going to paint behind the letters? No, I'm, I'm thinking about that. Maybe, a, what do you call it, uh, lavender to set them That'll off. That'll be interesting. Yep. Yeah. I like the overlap of the E over the A very much. That's going to create a whole new form. Awesome. All right, keep going. Nice. Shirley. Well done, Margo. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Margo. You mean Shirley. <laughs> Shirley, do you want to share? Liz, I haven't, I only just started the work and I haven't got time to uh, do any coloring, but I can share the work. Okay, um, you need to get on camera. Okay, there you are. Awesome. Can uh, you, can you lift it up a bit? We, yeah, a little bit higher. Lost, lust or lost? Yeah, L-U-S-T. Lust. Yeah, I haven't got time to do anything yet, but that's all I have done. It's going to be awesome. Will you say? Semi JPEG. Do you have right. any idea what color you're going to use? Uh, I haven't got a clue, but it would be a bright color, I suppose. Yeah, that would make sense. Very okay. nice. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see who's next. SD. I did two of them. Uh, one, uh, I, I'm not done. I mean, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I like how you reverse the E. Yeah, yeah. It uh, because it didn't look good. It's new, but as men, it looked much better. So I this I, <laughs> I don't want men, you know. <laughs> and I did the. 
on top of something that I have instead of uh, and. Yeah, I really like I really like this one. Yeah, um, not done, but what's the word? And and oh, I got you. E N D. Yeah, I, I really don't... like I really like this one. Yeah. If there was a way to emphasize the end. Somehow. Yeah, I know. I wasn't sure about the color, but it was done. Or I mean, I, I cut it from a newspaper, so I'll find another color that uh, a little lighter, maybe. Or maybe there's something you could draw on the end to make it a little bit lighter. Mm. To make it as a beginning, not as the end, flowery. Happy. Or dots or some, I don't know. I like the idea of putting it on the shredded paper very much. That really Might works. Sense. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. it really works. Thanks. Okay. And Jane, you're up. Hello. I'm sorry. I, I was working on another big project in another room. So I was... I was on today for inspiration, which I got in many, many forms from all of you. All right. So thank you. Well, that works for us. Maybe next week. Thank you. All right, Pat. Hi. Um, good morning. Good morning. I did. Oh, okay. Let's see. Yeah, there's too much glare. Yeah, it's hard to Why see. Not? So. It's my number seven and I did it on the iPad so it's quick and <laughs> yeah, that's I'll show you something else at the sketchbook would rather show. Do this then. I did a sketch. Oh nice. I'm more oh, excited nice. about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun and funny. I love it. <laughs> I it love really this love. My eyes when I saw this picture on the, I think New York Times when it's a picture from old time when they were installing this piece at Central Park. Okay. And I like how the O it's hanging. <laughs> it's cool. not finished, but I really liked it. I love this drawing. Fabulous. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. Yay. This <laughs> is brilliant. Well done. All right, thank you, Pat. Send me a JPEG of the other one if you can. Awesome. And Lorraine, we're glad you're here. Send me a JPEG and maybe I can share it next time. And Franz May. Thanks, Pat. Woo, look at this. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, love, love, love it. So I will do a square later. And I did joy and two hearts, but I'm just trying to figure out the colors that I will paint still. Probably yellow and then more black. I don't know. Nice. Yeah, something something bright. Yep. Beauty. <laughs> Very joyful. Nice. <laughs> still have a long way. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Friends May, I think you might be the last person. Is that possible? We had, we actually had 16 people, but I guess people left. All right, so thank you so, so much. Um, again, our artist for next week is Shepard Ferry. You've all heard of him, right? Is there anyone who's never heard of Shepard Ferry? I've never heard of him. <laughs> okay, well, you know the poster, uh, President Obama that he used in his campaign? Yes. With the big hope sign on it. That's Shepard Ferry made that. I'm familiar with his work anyway. <laughs> right. And just, okay, shameless plug for myself, my show Solo Duo. Also, Culture Stance, that's the subtitle, Culture Stance, is at Sarah's Gallery. It will open February 1st, closing February 26th. Sarah's Gallery is 547 West 27th Street in Manhattan. 
and there are a lot of galleries in that building. So you can come to my show and you can see a lot of other shows on the same day. You can kill many birds with one stone. There are quite a few big famous galleries around there that you can hit in the same day as well. There will be a performance in the gallery that day. Um, I believe it's a poetry reading, but the artist who's showing with me, Joanne Brody, it is a friend of hers. Uh, once I have the press release, once that's completed, I will be emailing all of you with that information. Any questions about next week or today? Any thoughts or comments before we sign off? I might end class a minute early because I do have this important Zoom. Liz, when does your show open? It just says closing ceremony. The opening well, day is, is February 1st. So it's February 1st until February 26th. And February 1st is a Tuesday. The galleries open Tuesdays through Saturdays, noon till six. We used to have evening hours on Thursday night from six till eight, but since COVID, we've ended that. Thank you, Liz. You are wow. so welcome, everyone. It was a great, great class. As always, I loved seeing all of you. Please stay healthy and warm and dry and do art. All right, see you soon. Take care. Send me JPEGs of your work. I'm always happy to make comments. Bye. Thanks for coming.